button. And uh, I appreciate all of that. Okay. Uh, let's jump down to Tony in Georgia for a theological question. Uh, if you, I, she says, I know you do not hold the gap theory. That's because in the, in the 2022 Taos Prophecy Conference, I gave a presentation on the gap theory. Uh, and, and I did conclude I don't hold it. Okay, I know you don't hold the gap theory, but would you be more open to a gap theory that did not allow for millions of years? I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to ring the bell for this one. That means it's the first time I've been asked this question. I have certainly been asked about the gap theory before, but this one narrows it down. And so we're going to put it in the bell ringing uh, uh, playlist. Now, would I be open to a gap theory that doesn't allow for millions of years? Say, Tony says, maybe a gap of a thousand years. My theory, in quotes, my theory is Lucifer originally reigned on the earth after Genesis 1-1 for a thousand years, which matches Christ's reign for a thousand years in Revelation chapter 20 and after the thousand years that Satan rebelled. This kind of, uh, th th this kind, this kind of gap theory has things going full circle. Okay, let me stop right there and then I'm going to read in just a moment. Um, I like, I like your thinking of following the pattern. Uh, Clarence Larkin did better at this than anyone in putting it in a picture. I'm going to see if I can find a picture here. And uh, yeah, here we go. This is Clarence Larkin's uh, book, Dispensational Truth. And here he talks about the three stages of the earth. The first stage, the world that then was. The second stage, the heavens and the earth, which are now. The third stage, the new heavens and the new earth. Now, let's just go down here to the first stage. Uh, and he's got the original earth, then the chaotic earth, and then the creative week. That is a picture of the gap theory. Genesis 1-1 is the original earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1-2 is the gap. The earth, I'm going to insert the word became. The earth became formless and void. And then you get into Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. And God said, let there be light. And there was light evening and morning. That was the first day, second day through the uh, seventh day. Now, let's uh, jump that back to the end and you've got the millennial age followed by the chaos, the renovation of the earth by fire, followed by the new heaven and the new earth. So in a sense, you've got old earth, chaos, new earth. Now, uh, let me back up again here and give this uh, full picture on the screen. And you see the... Um, uh, what, would the, what would the word be? Symmetry? Where you've got this threefold pattern at the beginning, old or original, followed by chaos, followed by restoration. And then that repeats at the end, original, chaos, new. Now, I think that there is something to be said about looking for, the, for this symmetry. God is so much a God of symmetry that to ignore a possible symmetry is really just to say, I don't study God very much. I don't study theology very much. I don't study the scripture very much. E.W. Bullinger, who does hold to the gap theory, he does such a fantastic job at outlining the Bible. Now, we almost need a class on how to understand an E.W. Bullinger outline. They're, they're in the Companion Bible. And, 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 you know, it takes, 
it takes a class to figure out what's he mean by this outline. I don't get it. But he always picks up the symmetry within the passage and that symmetry as it relates to other things. And it, and it's in there so many times, literally page after page, book after book, chapter after chapter, here is this symmetry. So I come along and I say, I don't hold to the gap theory. Here is the, the grand flaw in me not holding to the gap theory. The grand flaw is it's got this thousand year period at the end with nothing to balance it out. There's no symmetry there. This is an oddity. It's an anomaly. And everything I can see about God and his creation and his role in creation doesn't allow for anomalies. It doesn't allow for oddities. Everything has its symmetry. And that's true on a chemical level, on, on, a, on a music level, on a science level, on a, you know, you, you pick the level. It, there's this symmetry that's always going along. One that answers the other. So I reject the gap theory. What do I do with this anomaly? That, that is a, uh, it, it's, it's a major flaw in rejecting the gap theory. I'll admit it. So I like your idea of matching the symmetry. Why a thousand years? Why not 10,000 years? you know, or a hundred years or, you know, 500 years or whatever. Why is there this thousand year period prior to, if we're reading this right, there is some question for another day. If we're reading it right, that there's a thousand years prior to the, uh, the renovation of the earth, as Larkin calls it, the, the chaos, the uh, earth being uh, consumed and then the new earth. Why a thousand years? So matching that thousand years at the beginning, I love the artistry. I love the symmetry. I love the fact that that matches what God has shown in every way. Here is still my problem with it. And, and, and it's almost pick your problem. Which problem do you want to deal with? Do you want to deal with the fact that you don't have a symmetry, which is a real problem, but might I say on an average audience, you can slip that in easier. They don't say, oh, wait a minute, pastor. There's no symmetry there. But I don't have an average audience. We in the Taos Theological Seminary are exceedingly um, smart, well-informed, and good critiquers. Now, I don't have a symmetry. Here's your problem. Even if it's a thousand years you still come in this, uh, this segment right here, the creative, or the, the creative week, and you've still got the devil sort of squirming here underneath. Uh, is it possible to build a doctrine that says if that says somehow Satan is bound, but then released to, to put in that symmetry? Because at the end of this creative week, and the problem is this creative week aligns in the symmetry, it aligns to the new heaven and the new earth. Uh, it, is it possible to say, okay, Satan was bound, but then he's released again? I don't know. I have a problem with Genesis. Is it 136? I may be wrong on that. But Genesis uh, about 136, at the end of the sixth day where God says, this is very good. Not so much is my problem that maybe in the gap theory, maybe there was a previous destruction. I think you could have a previous destruction and still come along and say, okay, this is very good. But if Satan is already squirming around in the garden, that does not seem very good. And I don't know what to do with that. And that's why I've rejected the gap theory because of that, it is very good. So if you could find a way to, to show me how Satan is somehow not squirming around, I might, 
I might accept the gap theory. That, that's, that's where I am. Okay, let me get back to uh, D- Tony's comments here. This kind of thing uh, uh, going in full circle with rebellion. Uh, and, uh, okay, we re- read that. Uh, here he goes. I will also throw out the possibility that God allowed the earth to remain flooded for a thousand years before doing the work that begins in Genesis 3, uh, 1, 3. As a result, you have 2,000 years at Genesis 1 and 2, and then you have approximately 4,000 years from Adam to Christ, which makes 6,000 years. The 7,000 years will be Christ's reign. Any thoughts? Now, there's, a, there's also an interesting uh, addition to that that you would put, you would entertain the idea of the 6,000 years going up through, let's say, the resurrection of Christ, and so the 7,000th year was supposed to start right there. I, I, I kind of like that in the timing. One of the things I don't like about uh, the 6,000 years as it's often counted, bringing it up to today, is I question whether or not God is counting this dispensation of the, of the grace of God, that that might be a time when the clock was stopped. Now, in your situation, that overcomes that problem because the clock stopped, you know, at, say the resurrection of Christ, maybe the day of Pentecost or, or uh, the, the stoning of Stephen, the, the clock stopped and all of this time has not started and then it'll stop, uh, start again right in time for the 7,000 years. Uh, so if I were to hold the gap theory, I wouldn't have a problem with that. I would want to obviously support it a little bit if I was going to write a book about it or anything, but we're not necessarily writing a book about it. We're just uh, contemplating on it and uh, looking through here uh, and uh, carrying out. Uh, so yeah, looking at that, uh, the... the, the uh, uh, the, the problem, you know, like Eric says, uh, the gap theory is a hard no. It puts death before sin. And that does appear to be a problem. The other problem is I don't have any symmetry over here. Which problem do you want to take? Is the, 